let's start today's show in 1999. Oh, okay. Because I just want to give everybody an idea of what it's like to be a Jet fan and why, despite the optimism and the excitement and the hope of the last four or five months of Aaron Rodgers deciding his intention to play for the Jets and then actually signing with the Jets, being acquired by the Jets, how there is always underneath this excitement and hope an undercurrent of absolute misery. 1999 is where we start on this program. The last time the Jets, as we know, had Bill Parcells as their head coach. There was tons of hope fresh off of an AFC championship game appearance. I was there in Denver with my Wesley Walker jersey I wore in Camp Low Condo with my name still stitched in the back so you knew which bunk to return the laundry to after it was cleaned. I still fit in it. I was on ESPN for two plus years and I went and sat in the last row of Mile High Stadium because I'm a diehard Jet fan and also a masochist. (laughs) I watched the Jets take a halftime lead and then blow it against John Elway and Terrell Davis and the rest of the Broncos. And despite all of that, lots of hope because Bill was back. And so were the hopes for the Jets to maybe run it back and make the Super Bowl. And Vinny Testaverde took the field that day on opening day of the 1999 season. And a quarter and a half into the game, Curtis Martin, future Hall of Famer, fumbled as Willie McGinnis popped it loose against the Patriots. And Vinny went to go back and grab the fumble, loose ball, and blew out his left Achilles tendon. Carried off the field. There goes the Jets' hopes even though Tom Tupa went in the game and threw a touchdown pass to Keyshawn right Mm. after that to put the Jets up 14-10. to But we all knew, despite Tom Tupa performing admirably, Super Bowl hopes were over. And as a matter of fact, can confirm they were. Parcells gone, Belichick in, and he signs a cocktail napkin resigning. And the rest, we all know, is history, which is why we Jets fans know we're not allowed to have hope for very long. Cut to the present day, because last night, guess who was an honorary captain for the kickoff last night? Vinny Testaverde. No way. There he is. Oh. I saw this. No like, way. In all honesty, I saw, I heard this. I saw this. I thought to myself, what the hell is he doing there? I didn't see that. Because today Jeez. is the 24th anniversary of the day Vinny blew out his left Achilles tendon. Today. <sighs> September 12th, 1999. That happened. Now, we all know it's not Vinny's fault that Aaron Rodgers, four snaps in, blows out his left Achilles tendon as of this very morning. Confirmed. Clean tear. It's over. Four snaps. That's all we were allowed by the football gods. Four snaps before his left Achilles tendon snapped as Leonard Floyd came in. And the turf of MetLife grabs another. Aaron Rodgers went down and it looked innocent, but you could see on the photograph on the screen right here on our Roku channel feed, Leonard Floyd on top of the left leg and that is an unnatural way for a 39 year old Achilles tendon to be pressured couldn't believe that he limped and then sat down over and I kind of feel just in case maybe folks out there still don't comprehend what it's like to feel as a Jet fan 
Let's go pop culture. Remember the movie The Shining? Oh. Yes. Scatman Crothers. I just saw it a couple he weeks. was a caretaker <laughs> of the Overlook Hotel. Hotel. Yes. Denny. And he had the ability to communicate with a young boy at the Overlook Hotel in snowy Colorado. All the way from Florida. He was able to shine with this young boy knowing there was trouble trying to save him this entire time when Rodgers announced on Pat's show, I have an intention to play for the Jets. I'm out of my darkness therapy. I intend to play for the Jets. And then we waited and it happened. And then he shows up. And not only does he show up, he commits. He's hanging out. He's going to the Tonys. He's going to Taylor Swift. He's just Mr. New York. And he's not only locked in, but the fan base is locked in, and the Jets are locked in, and they are here for him, and he's here for them. And he's talking about redeeming Mekhi Becton, and he's talking about how beautiful the New York City skyline is and he's talking about how he might be here for a long time and hand things off to zach wilson and he's going to be here for a long time and you're about to have 20 years of greatness jets fans start now every single time i thought to myself this is just like Scatman crothers flying all the way from florida taking a flight getting into a snowcat going all the way up the mountain in the middle of a snowstorm just to get to the whole Overlook Hotel in time to get an axe in the chest. Four snaps in, axe in the chest. All work and no play makes the football gods clearly dull and bored. (laughs) They can't stop kicking the Jets in the nards. Four snaps and then a crazy thing happened as Zach Wilson came out after all of this and I thought to myself this thing's a wrap we all did in the United States of America watching this right yeah crazy thing happened we found out just how talented the roster is and how good Robert Sala is because I don't know how in the world they kept it together. Now, you could sit back here and troll Josh Allen and say, well, he helped. The Jets' defense is championship quality, which is why they went to get Aaron Rodgers to put more than just a handful of points on the board and not go through the excruciating experience of watching an unready Zach Wilson try to matriculate the ball down the field. And we saw Zach make a couple of good throws. And we saw Zach throw one right to the Buffalo Bills. Mm. We saw him retreat 40 yards before finally throwing one out of bounds. And when he threw it out of bounds and not to the Bills, I thought to myself, well, that's an improvement from the Patriots' performances, right? (laughs) Right. Yeah. But just when you thought it was all over, Garrett Wilson makes a play. Dude. And he is incredibly talented. And the defense makes plays. And just enough was happening to give the Jets a chance. And then Josh Allen, after the game, is actually tied by the Jets. First snap, takes his eye off the ball. Ball on the ground. He grabs it, and then it looked like ran into his own lineman. The Jets also ran into him as well. Ball on the ground. Jets take the lead. They play it conservative. Forcing overtime because they played it conservative and Josh Allen started to find Stephon Diggs just enough to force overtime. And I don't know how this happened. I still cannot compute it. Starting from the fact that tails failed in the, in the coin toss. Bill's called heads, and it showed up heads. I thought tails was supposed to never fail. I'm like, this is not happening. Hmm. And then the Bills false started, and then 
I don't know what that play calling was on second and long going on going on. I'm like thinking to myself, okay, you want to draw play it all you want on second and long instead of Josh Allen pulling his Mandalorian running around stuff and then keeping plays alive and finding digs wide open. I'm fine with that. They complied and then kicked it off to the rookie. We all fell in love with from Stephen F. Austin in hard knocks. Mr. Gibson goes to town. Touchdown. What the hell was that all about? The Jets actually won a game in which Rodgers goes down seemingly, and now today confirmed for the season, four snaps in. The Jets actually won a game? Zach Wilson, who spent the entire summer hearing from people like me in shows like this and Hard Knocks about how the Jets were like, last year, we don't have to deal with that anymore. Who are we talking about? Him. He actually hung in there. Robert Sala's in the end zone celebrating like he's got a uniform on. He kept it together. I can't believe that. Talk about a running a gamut of emotions. Crazy. But, of course, when it all subsides, win, that's very nice. But we're now staring into the abyss of at Dallas, home for New England, home for the Chiefs, at the Broncos, home for the Eagles, the first five games for Zach Wilson. Do me a favor, play me that soundbite. Mr. Hopkins and Bowie, the all-star team in our control room right now. Play me that one. This was Zach Wilson after the game. I just got to keep getting better. You know, trust my feet, trust my coaches, trust the guys around me, rely on this defense that we have, and um, progressively just rely on everything I feel like I've done throughout training camp and preseason as well, and just do my best to keep improving as a player. After this summer with Aaron, learning behind him, talking to him just in meetings and things like that, how much more prepared do you feel like you are and ready are you to really take that next step as a player? Yeah, a lot more prepared, a lot more prepared. And, and you know, the hardest part is now putting it into a game, and i, I got to be able to do that. And so going into this week, it's applying everything that, you know, he's kind of helped walk us through and being able to watch him and the coaches, um, how they've handled this offense. You know, i got to be able to handle that efficiently. Okay, so more – Roller coaster of emotions to sort through. I feel like this is therapy. It is. On one hand, the Jets still pulled it out. Mm-hmm. They have a championship defense. Mm-hmm. They scored on special teams to wrap it. Talk about a gut punch of all gut punches. And the Bills really had an opportunity. Josh Allen had a real opportunity to provide the gut punch last night when he spiked it to bring on the field goal that hit an upright and doink through that, to force overtime. That's wild. Before that, if he had fake spiked it, I think I might have committed <laughs> an absolute act that I would not want to commit in front of my children. Big throw an axe at uh, I just Honestly, I was that just the Jets fan base. We were so raw. If he had fake spiked it and thrown a touchdown. But I don't want to go there. Maybe be positive that maybe Zach is still the – second overall pick of of a draft and he does have some ability and maybe they're going to be able to put it together and all he's got to do is just not turn it over just game manage we've seen it before so that's one way to look at it but then there's the other 54 years to look at it and i say this with all certainty call tom brady right now call him right now (laughs) call tom brady i know I know he's the Patriot forever, and he was just there, right? Literally, Literally just Patriot just for life. life. Literally it, Patriot for, for life. There's sti- I could still hear the echoes <laughs> from Sunday ceremonies. Tommy, he's a Tommy. Tommy. Right? Yeah, I could still, I could still hear it. <laughs> Call Tom. Hey, Tom. Listen. I know this is a Curtis Martin once did it. Bill did it. Parcells did it. I mean, it's not totally crazy. I mean, it sounds crazy. I know, but I'm not rational right now. <laughs> Dude, cause there's no. I don't want to hear about Carson Wentz. Well, you're gonna I, hear all those. I names. know you're gonna hear about it. Nick, I know I'm gonna Nick hear about Foles, it. Matt Ryan. And we're gonna talk about it with Daniel Jeremiah the later on. Scott Van Pelt's about to join us, and you know Albert Breer, middle of this hour, and there's you. But I, honestly, 
like how if, how are we back here again how does this happen four snaps that's it just four snaps and now we're hearing about this is tough to come back from mr rogers whose neighborhood was all about this year next year and maybe till I'm 45, and then I hand it off to Zach, just like Brett handed it to me. That was the implication. And then it's going to be great around here for a long time. Now we're just four snaps in. Maybe we're never going to see him again. Really? Really? How did we get here? And can the football guy, look, what can we do? Football gods, what can we do? What do you, what do you, what do you want from us? What is it? Because I'm willing to pay it. I think get it together. Me, (laughs) Vayner, uh, Gary V, Green, well, Greeny. The whole Wu. Let's all put it together. Yeah, Yeah. Method Man. Method Man. Let's go. The Riz of the Jizzle. Every inspect the deck. Last one. Ghostface Killer, the Chef. Of those names. Let's put it together. What do you want? What's your boy? Do you want from us? Give me an answer. And that's my take. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.